All right, now we will call this meeting to order the Parks and Recreation Commission, October 7th, 2021, at what, 602? And first, we will, are looking for an approval of the September 2nd, 2021 meeting minutes. A motion to approve? I'll move to approve the minutes as we see in our packet. A second? I'll second. Any discussion? All right. Uh, then uh, those in favor of approval of the minutes as written in the packet? Aye. 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 I have a... Aye. I have a question, though, okay. after we approve the minutes. Okay. Just well, the motion carries, and the question is? Okay. Um, in number two there, um, it was actually me that asked that a line be added, asked for this uh, to be on the agenda each meeting, as part of update of current projects. Are we seeing this list of current projects in our agenda? Each. Okay, all right. The ones that you were, I thought you were referencing. If I miss them, let me let me know what, you know. I think the general idea was uh, you were gonna give us an update each month on current projects, whatever was going on. Yep, yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and uh, public appearances for non-agenda items. I do not see anybody here for that. Uh, uh, item four, review and approve the agenda for tonight's meeting. Uh, motion to approve the agenda. I'll move the agenda as written. Second. Second. Thank you. Uh, those in favor? In favor? Aye. 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 Excuse me. No. Motion carries. All right. Uh, our discussion uh, item for item 5A. The 2022 update to parks, open space, and recreation plan work session one. And uh, Scott may have something to say. It's explained that Wade has uh, is here to present information to us too. Yeah, and maybe just as a as a preface before we before we get into work session one, I, I did include in your packet uh, the memo that that Wade uh, uh, presented that the park commission is aware of that had the tentative uh, timeline and, and, uh, and agenda items that we were going to speak of. Uh, now this was a, a rather aggressive agenda when we put it together uh, with the idea that we were in the process of updating the plan due to our potential uh, receipt of a grant for the hub project from the DNR, but we were not successful with that. Uh, not to say that we don't want to keep moving with this, but the, you know, there's going to be additional time for us to discuss items if, if we need to discuss them. Uh, so I just wanted to kind of preface uh, the timeline. Uh, we did hold our, our public meeting, uh, and it was really uh, uh, pretty, pretty well attended. We had, oh, I would say, 10 or 12 folks that were here uh, in person and about the same online, so it, it really, it really was a, a good dis uh, discussion. What I did preface uh, at the beginning that I know there was some discussion on whether or not we were going to do a 10-year update or a five-year update, and I clarified that we are planning to do a five-year update. Uh, this was after confirmation from the DNR that in order to remain eligible for funding that they, they do require to have a five-year update. So uh, just to, to clarify that item uh, before we get started. Uh, and again, it, it, it is going to be a, a pretty structured uh, discussion. We want to take it uh, piece by piece. Uh, there was a lot of uh, items that we aren't going to talk about tonight, but were, were identified and, and brought up. And rest assured, we'll, we'll get to those items uh, at some some point in time. Uh, and again, I think just a general, and I'm hoping Wade can kind of uh, relay this, uh, this idea too, that you know the park and open space plan is really our guideline uh, and your direction, if you would. There's going to be things that uh, the park commission is gonna wanna include in the, the plan, uh, but it, the, those are things that we're not really gonna be able to uh, 
um, I don't want to say debate, but discuss because there may be pretty lengthy discussions. For example, the parkland dedication ordinances and things like that. The park commission, they're going to say that, you know what, we definitely want to take a look at it. But at that point, then I guess what I'm asking is that you allow staff to begin to start to put together those uh, types of ideas and policies to get something to the Park Commission for them to react to instead of trying to create uh, those adjustments within the, within the discussion at the Park Commission meeting. So, and that's just generally a, a general idea uh, on the whole thing that the plan is going to kind of give us direction and then we as staff will, will work on the things that you'd like to work us to work on and then we'll bring it um, Bring it to the commission in the in in the future. Does that uh, help kind of lay the framework for for the process? Yes. Excellent. And I think uh, the first one uh, that we have scheduled for October is inventory. Uh, and what I did is I included in your packet the um, the section of the. The plan, it's, it's the existing conditions report, which is really the section that lays out uh, a lot of inventory uh, information. So that's the one that we're going to, uh, I'm going to ask Wade to kind of to kind of roll us through uh, that section. And certainly there's been a lot of additions uh, to the park system, which we'll, which we'll include in the, in the updated document. Um, you know, uh, uh, properties and things that we've received in the last five years. So I think with that, if there isn't any questions, I'll throw it to, throw it to Wade for, and, and Wade may look a little, a little blurry eyed. He was just, he's been working hard on the redistrict, redistricting plan. So we certainly appreciate him uh, giving us some time here at the park commission. So. Yeah, thank you, Scott. Thank you, Park Commission. Yeah, I'll just start off by saying I, this is my third committee meeting today. I think that's that's a record for me. So uh, I told Julia we did the best committee first, but I'll tell this this committee the, the best is for last. So that away, that away. A politician. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I did. I do want to share my screen um, with you all. Uh, maybe just kind of work off the existing plan. Yeah, so again, I think the goal tonight, you know, this is the first of, of multiple work sessions with this with this commission. Um, I think most of the commission was probably in attendance at the public meeting, uh, was it last week or, or the week before? So some of this will be repetition, but we'll kind of set the stage for, you know, for what comes next. So again, I think, you know, a three section plan, um, section one, executive summary, section two, existing conditions, uh, which we'll talk about about tonight and then section three is is really the meat of the plan in my opinion the the action items or the policies um but tonight again we want to focus on section two um we call it the existing conditions report in my head i really frame it as data um it's really about data that we use to identify issues and then um we address policies and action items to to address those issues so um Again, just kind of starting with, with how it's currently organized in terms of the existing plan. Um, so what you see in front of here is, is a table of contents. So, so we ba basically break that data into, I guess it would be five different categories. So stakeholder perceptions, uh, classification and standards, um, assessment, you know, how we evaluate how our park system is doing. Um, and then an inventory itself, you know, what does our what does our park system entail? What does it consist of? Uh, and then we talk about ways to implement this this plan in terms of policy tools or implementation tools. And then again, we have this this section of issues uh, which come from analyzing those those previous existing condition categories. And then again, we create action items or policies to address those issues and and ultimately move towards a, a better park system. So I think what I'll do is probably just briefly um, kind of identify what's in the in the current plan under those categories. And then I think, you know, my goal for tonight is just to have a kind of a free form discussion on, um, you know, what will be done to this section to, to update it. Uh, certainly can take feedback and then, you know, um, wrap it up and, and move on. So 
again, just in terms of stakeholder perceptions, that's kind of our first big um, category. Now, we, we did do a really thorough engagement process um, five years ago when we updated the plan. You know, we, we did a really comprehensive, thorough sur survey. Um, so we're not we're not doing that this time around. We we feel good about um, those perceptions still being valid. You know, generally speaking, across the community. So really, what we did is, um, I guess, backing up. First off, we identified kind of our our process for engaging with with the public as we develop the plan. So this section will certainly um, you know update it with with major feedback elements that we you know we we begun and we will continue to undertake uh, throughout the next you know six to nine months or, or whatever it takes to, to finish the plan. Um, and then I think, you know, we just kind of summarized the major feedback components that we heard. I envision doing that again, you know, once we, once we end the engagement process, we'll, we'll, we'll gather all the feedback, we'll analyze it and we'll come up with some, what I'll call major, major feedback themes, uh, stakeholder perception themes. And then again, this is where I, I talked about the survey. So that was a big part of um, engaging last time. So, Again, we think probably not a whole lot has changed in terms of, of broad-based stakeholder perceptions per, per surveying, but um, so we'll probably keep a lot of this of this data in here as we do this update. Um, and then we get into the second category under existing conditions of, of classification and standards. And I know there's some real interest in the, the commission in exploring this. Um, staff is actually, you know, we, we talked about staff beginning that in the next couple of months. So, to, to Scott's point, I don't envision having that study or that analysis done by the time this plan is done, and I think that's perfectly okay. Um, merely what this plan does is enables us to do that work. And then ultimately, if, if policies change related to classification and standards, they will be automatically incorporated into this plan. Um, to further kind of reinforce that point of, of not having this work done, you know, for the, the plan update, I think when we talk about potentially revising class classification and standards, that is a that is a big item, a big ticket item that I think will probably take a year plus to make sure it's well thought through. And then, you know, if the commission is interested in exploring changes to these policies, that will go, you know, up the food chain and take various various months to get to get those approvals as well. So what you see in front of you is is again classification and standards from as they currently are um, over the next couple of years, you know, maybe we, we come up with some new ideas and then again would incorporate uh, those new ideas into this this plan update by by reference. Um, so moving on again, just, you know, really talking about our, our part categories, the way we classify things, what our standards are. Um, and then we get into assessment, how we evaluate um, at, at kind of a policy level, you know, what our park system is is all about. So we do have current standards um, in terms of acreages and and park spaces. So again, this this could be explored, uh, potential revisions as part of that classifications and standards study that we just that we that we just talked about. But as of now, um, you know these are the current standards, and I would envision these, you know, going into this 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 plan update as well. And then we just have some basic maps, um, you know, service areas per our different park designations. Um, and then we talk about what those park designations are, uh, community area and neighborhood. And then again, we just get into kind of this idea of, of rec facilities and, you know, how many facilities per people we should have, um, you know, types of facilities desired, all those sorts of things. And then we get into just, you know, the real, I guess I'll call it an inventory, literally identifying every, every property in our system, giving a quick snapshot of, of, you know what those properties are what they their development status you know what they have at them in terms of amenities so obviously we've, we've had new parks come online in the past five years so this will be um you know obviously updated to reflect those those new park properties and actually scott and i have started some of this work already you know figuring out where those properties are on maps and and then we'll figure out you know how they um you know those little snippets that we'll put into this into this section so just a lot of map work um, and then just adding text related to our, our different properties. So then moving on to, I guess we're into issues. Um, hold on here.
I, I take that back. So then we, we talk about tools, again, an inventory of things that city staff can use, that our Parks Commission can use, that our council can use to implement uh, the action items that will come in in the next section. And, and these relate to regulatory elements, you know, our, our land division ordinance, uh, zoning ordinance, parkland dedication, um, you know, basically the ways the ways we can get parkland and improve it. Uh, so we talk about all those tools. We talk about, you know, grant opportunities, funding sources, um, federal, state, local. Um, again, just various various tools that we can use to, to implement uh, the plan. And then we get we get into issues. And again, I think this in my head is probably the most important section of this or part of this section. Um, and that's this idea of, okay, well, we've got all this data, we've got the inventory. What are the issues related to that data and that inventory? And previously with our most recent update, we came up with kind of a laundry list of what I'll call issue categories. And I mentioned these at the, the public meeting as well, but you know, future park uses, um, future park sizes and locations, uh, trails and paths, um, new rec programs and services, user groups, um, and then we kind of divide our resources in upland and, and wetland or, or water. Um, how do we improve and maintain our facilities and, and, and landscaping? Um, kind of a general category of deficiencies, uh, past uncompleted initiatives, governmental partnerships, and then financial resources, again, to, to ensure our park system um, is, is maintained and enhanced. So uh, again, there's a lot. I mean, I think this is, again, I think the real important section, I'm not going to Get into a ton of detail here, but then you can see what we do is we take those broader categories um, that we just talked about, you know, future park uses, and talk more specifically about um, some some examples of, of of things. So, you know, park themes, uh, food and drink seems to be a popular issue lately. Um, we talked about that. Um, community gardens, urban agriculture. You know, we're talking about a potential ag park. Um, so again, just some potential specific issues under that broader future park uses category. Um, and then just maybe one other example. Um, let's see here. So yeah, past uncompleted initiatives. Again, I think folks are probably familiar with our conceptual and open space proposal, which kind of helps helps inform potential future park acquisitions uh, in terms of you know where in the city would make would make for good park space. And then we have our Moraine Edge Park, which I think the group is familiar with. Um, a Heritage Circle route, which is kind of a, a, a loop bike trail that's that's yet uncompleted. So again, these are you know issues related to to our park system that we would then develop um, action items to address. So I think with that, I'll, I'll probably stop and just you know kind of open it up to questions or or comments, and, and certainly we get into kind of a you know a, a discussion on. Um, what kind of elements will be incorporated into this this section as it relates to the uh, the update? So, yeah, I have a couple of questions. Wait, uh, the first one is um, you mentioned that we are not going to do a a survey that you're going to use the same data from the last one, and my question is why. I think um, a lot of have changed in the last five years. And after COVID, maybe there is another perception of how people are using parks. So I would say that um, my recommendation is that we should be doing a survey. And also my other question is, um, I, I would prefer that we take the time and do this um, update and we take the time and not rush it. So I don't know why we need to finish this by March or April next year. Uh, because I say that you say that you're still working on the category of parks and all of that. So I would like to see that included in the final parks update. I know Duke, you know, not present the half something that is still, is not done yet because we are still missing a big important piece of the puzzle. So. So I want to understand your, the logic behind this. Yep. So yeah, I guess to your last point, um, the, the park pl plans aren't, plans don't need to contain the work, plans enable the work. So plans create policy for staff to go and do the work. 
So in my opinion, if we want to really do a really thorough job with a parkland dedication classification study, um, <laughs> that could take years and there's no guarantee that anything could ever come of it. So potentially if, if, if the group wants, you know, a potential classification study in the park plan, I would just caution that your update could be years off for, for a park plan. So just having done this for 15 years, again, I, I think plans enable work. They don't need to contain the work. If there's a, and there is a statement in the plan that says, you know, the city shall explore revision of parkland standards and classification. So that, that enables the work. And then when we go do the work over the next year plus, after the plan is adopted, let's, as an example, um, if and when we get a study that changes policy based on park commission direction and council direction, then it's just, it's merely incorporated by reference. So, and if that's, you know, I, that, that's an approach. Um, your, your way is also an approach, but I just, I just want to caution that, and I, I work in the planning department. Um, I, I would love to get to the, this parkland study in the next couple months, um, but to be honest, it's not a priority for the planning department. Um, so if there is a desire for the parks commission to move quicker on that, to get the park plan updated, there would need to be exploration of, of additional capacity and, and resources to do that. Similarly, that, that relates to, to the survey portion of it. I would I would counter that for a, a, a plan of this scope in a city this size, um, a, a 10 year survey is, is sufficient. Um, we, we update a comp plan on a, on a 10 year cycle and, and we do surveys as part of that, that 10 year cycle. Um, additionally, um, capacity will be an issue. Um, if, if the park commission desires a, a survey, that would need to be developed by, by park staff. Um, and then I think, was there another point I, I might have missed? Oh, I guess backing up, um, you know, when, when this, this process was, was put forth, um, there was a, a park commission ab action to frame this as a minor update. Um, the process laid out thus far by staff would entail a minor update. In my opinion, a survey of the magnitude that that's being discussed would would be a major update. Any other questions, comments? None. Uh, hi, this is Heidi. Heidi. Um, just one sort of question, comment. Uh, I guess I sort of agree with Andrew in terms of um, maybe the extra surveying not necessarily needed. I, I mean, I guess I would ask the commission because I'm new here, typically is there a lot of buy-in from the community on these sort of surveys or is it typically sort of a few people, the same players? Um, not to say that their opinions aren't valid, but I mean, do we kind of already know what we need to know? I guess that's my question. If I could just make a quick point, just having done a lot of surveys with, with this city, um, the survey we did for this, this park plan five years ago, actually I thought was was fairly well, um, we got a lot of responses. I can't remember the, the number offhand, but yeah, I mean, I thought it was, it was really good participate, a really good participation level. And I think we crafted the survey in a way that was, was very thorough and strategic and, and got the data that we needed. Um, but yeah, certainly there's always the, um, you know, surveys are, um, sometimes you get high, good participation, sometimes you don't. Um, so that, that's a consideration, yep. Scott, do you remember offhand the number of folks that participate? I might even have the number in the plan. Scott, do you have a sense at all of? I, I, I would agree that it was, uh, there was good participation. It, it may have been in the, you know, in the hundreds, maybe 300 or so, if I recall correctly. Well, that's, I, I know it was definitely in the hundreds. And for some reason, 300 pops into my head or 900. And I can't remember which it was, but. I, I, I think it was more the 300. Okay. Yeah, th that sounds right. I think it was, yeah, 300 plus, probably. Well, and we had, we had uh, different meetings and charrettes and it was, 
it was really well attended and particip you know a lot of people participated. Yeah, and I'll just quickly uh, pull out the engagement process from from last time. So yeah, if you see, uh, this was kind of our our process last time. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, survey. I mean, similar to what we're doing now, with the exception of a no survey. Um, but other than that, you know, I think a similar number of public meetings, similar number of um, probably work sessions with this body. So. Um, a question I have, if, if a survey were to be conducted again this time around, would it have sufficed to use the same survey as was used five years ago as far as not having to invest time in crafting a new survey? Yeah, that would be an option. Certainly there's still, I mean, even with that, there's still, um, you know, responsibility for posting and analyzing results and get, you know, there, there's it's still a workload, but that would be, um, that'd be a way to reduce workload for sure. Um, and, and again, I guess to the, was it Heidi's point? I mean, um, if we're using the same survey, chances are we'll get <laughs> the same people completing it. Um, generally speaking with prob probably a similar responses. I, I could be wrong, but those are things to, to think about as well. I think last time we, we distributed, um, we did pretty good outreach. You know, we had, a, had it in the paper, we had it on the website, we sent it to the park and rec listserv, which I think is over a thousand people, um, neighborhood associations. Um, so again, pretty thorough outreach, uh, you know, five years ago. Well, and, and, and maybe, and, and maybe a, a quick check would be to look on page 11 of our, our packet, which actually gave a summary of the, of the survey results that we did receive uh, you know, number one, popular system uses, walking, socializing, biking, water activities. If, if we see those, uh, would we anticipate that the, that the responses would be different than what they were back then? Uh, you know, so I, so I think that the results that we received when we did it originally, I, I'm thinking the results would probably be about the same. I would not anticipate that there would be major, major changes in the results. Sue, I just have a question for oh, the survey. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, okay. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Sarah. Okay, for the survey, I know we had voted on the review being a small, review, just having it, the previous reviews in the near-ish past. Um, I guess, Scott, do you have any insight if having a survey would even fall within the criteria of a minor review, or does that fall without or outside the bounds of kind of our previously agreed upon scope? If I, I could, maybe I could okay, interject yeah. Scott and then Scott, feel free to, because yeah, I. Just kind of put it, put, kind of put the scope together. You know, I think there was an understanding. It, again, it's all subjective; nothing's set in stone. But I, I think you know, as staff put that scope together, in our head, minor wouldn't include a survey. Um, I, I think I don't even, I can't remember if that was even discussed at at the park commission meeting when the scope was adopted. But um, when staff put that that minor scope update together, that that would be the thought was not not surveying but again it's all subjective if if the commission desires a survey um that's your prerogative and would we'll, we'll, staff would have to figure out or park staff would have to figure out a way to, to get that done so um i have a comment and a question so 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 we are we are we are doing a a minor update so I want to understand what does it mean, a minor update? What are the things that we can discuss? Because I was thinking that maybe this is the opportunity for us to discuss, um, to review our inventory of park and review if we need to modify some of the park. We can convert some of the park, you know, grass area in prairies. And, you know, we're talking about climate change affecting our park system, connectivity, uh, uh, you know, um, so, so I want to understand now that if we are doing a minor, uh, is practically changing, updating the data, 
adding the new parks. Um, yeah, no. You know, so I want to know what is that, what it encompasses to have a, a minor yeah. uh, update because yeah. maybe I have my expectation are totally different what I was coming to do with this plan. No, that's a good plan or a good question. So in my head, a minor update means we're not gonna blow up the plan. You know, we're not gonna throw this plan away and, and start from scratch. It means we're gonna keep the, the plan outline, you know, the three sections. Um, it also means public engagement wouldn't, isn't gonna be as robust as it was five years ago, which is, you know, kind of what we're discussing now. But I think to your, to your real point, Julia, to me, it, it doesn't imply any restrictions on exploration of what I'll call new policy. And I think that's really what you're talking about is, is um, you know, just exploring ways to, to, you know, maintain and improve our park system. So, and again, I you know that that conversation will happen at our next work session um, next month when we talk about action items. But yeah, I think a minor update can include major policies, major policy changes or ideas. It's just not um, starting from scratch with a, a new plan document nor is it spending six months on, on public engagement. And, um, and Scott, feel free to yeah, chime and, in on and, that. And if I might, Wade, it, it, it may be a, uh, a, current, a current idea or current uh, a theme in the, in the plan, but there might be an emphasis from the, from the Park Commission and, and that emphasis will then kind of prioritize the work that they want staff to do in order to you know, address those emphasis. Um, you know, right. if, if it, you know, it, it, in regards to that, na the natural one that you're referring to, Julia, you know, there's, there's a couple different ones that are included in the plan where we re, uh, readjust or, or uh, reutilize or retool some of the open space plan or the open space that we have. If, if we've got a lot of grass that we need to mow, and our capacity isn't isn't there in order to do that. Maybe the conversion of some of these areas to natural resources or those kinds of things is is something that we can work on. And, and certainly, we'd have to do a study and, and all of those kinds of things. But I, like I say, I think that the, the plan is solid. All of the things are in there, and it might just be a case of an emphasis that the park commission is is providing to the staff so that we can work on those, you know, parkland dedication. That that seems to be an emphasis right now. So it's it, it's things that we can that we can work on as, as staff and, and present it uh, to the commission. And that's a really good point, Scott. Because um, you know a lot of the a lot of the feedback we've gotten thus far, I would call it policy related. Again, related to our action items that we'll talk about next month. And, and to be honest, to Scott's point, I think a lot of those. The majority of the feedback we're getting, um, it is already addressed in the plan. Maybe not at the level of specificity that, you know, the feedback is talking about, but that's the idea is that a plan is a 30,000 foot um, policy document. And then if, if there is interest from the commission in acting on a certain action item, whether it's landscaping standards or a study of a certain type, you know, that's where the commission directs staff to proceed with that work task based on that, that action item. So, um, so again, you've got the, the broad policy in the plan, and then it's just a matter of um, creating a work task for staff to, to proceed towards implementing that policy. And I'll use some examples, um, community gardens, dog park, um, North Cheshire Road hub. These are all things that were concepts in, in the update Four year, five years ago, that there was either staff initiative or commission or council initiative to to get these things done. Um, so, so yeah. Well, and in, in, in even uh, with our uh, Stoner Prairie Park planning process, we've got the three S's, which are sociable, you know, seams and and uh, the solitude. So, you know, we've got the we've got the the basics of, of the things that we need to include in all of our, our new park plan. So it, you know, it really, the, the document is a working document that, that really is kind of giving staff and the city direction on, on, its, on its park and, and natural resources. 
Any other questions or comments? Go ahead. Um, I know that the grant that we're looking at for the hub is, is uh, we didn't get, but uh, you mentioned to be eligible for various types of grants, we need to have a current uh, parks plan. At what point does this plan become not current that we are no longer eligible for such things? So, you know, not that this is what I'm advocating for, but if we did decide to um, uh, undertake a new survey and uh, rework the classification, park classification systems, all things that would extend our timeline considerably, um, are we then left without a current plan for several months or years where we're ineligible for funds? Scott, do you want me to take that? Sure, go, go, go ahead. Yeah, so really the, the gist of the, um, of the requirement for, for grant eligibility comes from DNR, state agency. And then I think they get some federal funds that might, might require that as well. You know, to be, to be honest, in my, I've been here almost 10 years. Scott, you've been here longer. Um, we've never tapped into those, those grant programs. We tried this year and, and we weren't successful. Um, so, you know, I think we still wanna stay current with, with those requirements, but I don't see anything in the foreseeable future in terms of grant opportunities that, you know, that we'd be going after that um, that would be an issue. That being said, when we did apply for the, the hub grant, we did talk with a DNR person and they gave us like a letter of extension, meaning if we would have got some hub grant funds, that letter of extension would have sufficed until we had our plan adopted. Now, I think that letter is probably good through like early next year. But again, let's say we don't, and just, I'm just full information here. I mean, if we don't complete something by until mid next year, uh, that's fine because chances are we won't be going after DNR grants anyway. Um, all that being said, you know, I, even with the DNR deadline not necessarily looming over us, I, I wouldn't, you know, I would, I would encourage an efficient process that, um, that is, is, you know, is relative to, to the undertaking. Meaning if the commission feels we have a, a good plan in place and there was a, cons a general consensus or agreement on what the scope of the update should be, you know, I, I, it would in my head make sense to, you know, abide by, by that. So, um, but again, you know, we're not under, I don't, I mean, there's no, the only deadlines are really self-imposed. I mean, you know, if, if the commission decides this thing needs to be extended, that, you know, that's, that's fine too. Heidi, I see you have a question. Um, well, actually just a comment, and I apologize if I'm giving information that you guys are already aware of. I know that Dane County, and I'm not sure if it's the parks or if it's DNR or who it is, they, uh, they do have a lot of grants available for, um, connectivity because I know the desire is to, you know, sort of have a, a circle of parks that basically starts at one point and goes all the way around the county and then to the other. And I don't know if any of this would fall into that, if we could work any of that into that. I don't have all the details, but if, if you guys wanted me to uh, reach out to the town of Middleton, which is where I worked previously, to find out um, what specifically they applied for, I'd be happy to do that. Uh, and again, you guys may already be aware of this, so I apologize if I'm yeah, saying, I, telling you something you already know. No, I appreciate that, Heidi. I think that might be the Dane County Park Grant, P-A-R-C, um, which is kind of focused on trails, biking, biking stuff. We actually did apply for that this year. Um, we didn't get an award this year, but we got kind of a handshake agreement that we probably will be getting some money next year. Um, so, but yeah, pre, yeah. I, so I think that's probably the same information, but yeah, if you have any further detail on that program, we'd be happy to, to look into it. Sure. I mean, I'll, I'll reach out. I mean, you know, it can't hurt, you know, one community helping another. I think that's, and, and again, it, you, you probably know more way, way more about it than I do, but, um, I'll see what I can find out prior to the next meeting. Thank you. Any other comments, questions?
All right, well then let's go ahead if there's no objection to uh, item 5B, which is resolution R180-21, uh, approving a contract for teen services and resources facility community engagement services. And um, this is an action item, so before Wade begins uh, the discussion, I'm looking for a motion to approve the resolution. No one wants to move to approve the resolution? No, yes. Uh, I move approval of resolution R-148-21, contract for SEBI for, oh, resolution one, uh, sorry. Uh, move approval of, of approving resolution R-180-21, approving con a contract for teen services and resource facility is a community engagement services. And a second? All second. second. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Wade. Yeah, and I'm, thank you. I'm just pulling up a document. I apologize. Um, just wanted to share my screen. And you have this all in your packet, but I just wanted to, to get it up there. Um, so I think folks that follow kind of Pittsburgh News are probably fairly familiar with this project. So basically, um, we are exploring the development of a potential teen center in our Verona Road West neighborhood, which is um, kind of Northwest Pittsburgh, Verona Road area. And it's part of our broader Healthy Neighborhoods Initiative, which again is really trying to um, be better strategically as a city addressing needs in three of our Northern neighborhoods. So uh, I think there's a, an interest in exploring, a, again, a, a teen center facility up in that neighborhood. It would be, um, at this point, the vision is, is city owned, potentially privately operated. But prior to any of that construction or, or those sorts of things, there needs to be, um, well, per council direction, a community engagement process to essentially inventory needs and wants in that neighborhood, and then how those needs and wants translate into um, being addressed with, with this type of facility. So council did allocate, uh, I think it was $25,000-ish um, in, in the budget to proceed with hiring a consultant to undertake these or provide services to the city to engage with that with that neighborhood that with that community and then there was some other um, private donations that i think got that that pool of money up to around thirty one thousand dollars so i put out an rfp request for proposal um, seeking consultants to provide those those types of services um, we did just get one proposal back um, that being said it was a uh, very good proposal uh, a proposal from a group that has vast experience in the in the region doing this kind of work um, and, and really is probably the best suited um, group regionally to, to do this kind of work. And that group is EQT by design. Um, so yeah, so we interviewed them. Uh, the interview team decided to make them a conditional offer to, to contract with us uh, with, with said offer being premised on approval of a contract by the, by the city council. So what you see in front of you tonight is that draft contract to engage with that, that consulting firm uh, to provide those those community engagement services to get, again to inform that that teen center facility. Now I do just want to quickly point out um, <laughs> I was recently made aware of that the contract template I was using was probably not the most appropriate for these kind of services. So I, <coughs> excuse me. So I did get the the correct contract template from our legal uh, department. I'm currently getting all the stuff out of the, the contract that's in the packet into that into that draft. I do want to point out that that template, um, nothing will be changing substantively. Everything, the, the, the meat of the, the contract is still, will still be in this new contract. It's just a matter of certain legalese. That's, I, I basically, I have the wrong template. So I do want to make the, the commission aware that I am working to, um, to get that new, that new template update. And I can certainly show that if, if the commission has any concerns about what that what that template looks like. But so I guess the, the, the goal today would be to, um, I can certainly answer any questions or comments the, the commission might have, and then a recommendation of either, I guess, approval or denial of this of this contract to, to the Common Council. And just backing up, and maybe I'll hand it off to Scott, but you know, again, this is part of our, our HNI, our Healthy Neighborhoods Initiative. 
And the city's done a real good job of, of moving that initiative forward. Um, but to some degree, in my opinion, the initiative is is kind of a it's a program without a place, meaning it's um, it kind of touches a lot of different departments. And right now it's I kind of oversee it in, in the planning department. But you know, this being a part of the H and I a, a facility like this at this point in time, given our city um, department structure. It makes sense to be housed in the parks department, so that's why it's it's coming before you. I think what will probably happen over the next couple of years is there'll be some analysis about, you know, as these facilities come online, the hub being another example, um, you know, maybe at some point there's, they, they get housed somewhere else, whether it's a, a different city department or, or a new city department. But I think, again, given our current city structure, um, you know, and talking with other staff and, and um, city administrator, you know, we think it makes the most sense to, to be housed in parks and that's why it's coming before you tonight. So uh, with that, I can take any any questions or comments the commission might have. Uh, this is Heidi, I have a question. Um, so I live over in the neighborhood uh, where I believe you might be planning on putting one of these, uh, I, maybe not, I live over by, on Anton Drive. Um, uh, but my question is, one of the things that the city of Madison did when they uh, put the community center in over at Warner Park, or I should say one of the things that they didn't do is they did not, I don't know what they didn't do to make sure this didn't happen, but it became and still is um, quite a draw for the drug trade. And my concern is that I think this is a great idea and I think it's just what the young people in this area need, but I'm just wondering if it's been any sort of thoughts or proposals have come through. How do we avoid what Madison fell into? Yep, no, that's a great point. Um, so, so kind of just some background. So really this is step one in a planning process. We're not, we have, we're not even to the point of like locations or any of, or, you know, what, what it'll look like. At this point in time, we merely have a, a neighborhood that has a need, um, your neighborhood, and this is the first step in figuring out more specifically what those needs are. And that's literally, like, literally it's it's getting feedback and engaging with the community on, on what this, how this facility could work best. And even to your points about, you know, how do we craft a facility that doesn't create public safety issues? So once we get this done, hopefully, you know, sometime mid next year, the next step will then be to, um, you know, essentially come up with a concept, meaning, okay, we now understand the needs and wants. Now let's talk about where it could go, what it could look like, and, and what it could have in it to address those needs and wants. So I think everything you just mentioned will probably get, um, we'll, we'll begin with this, with this process and be a continuous process of, of creating a facility that um, meets goals and doesn't doesn't make make things worse for the city, and you know just a few points there. We, we're going through this with our hub project right now. We you know we're engaging with our police department. Um, you know there's a there's a term called safety through environmental design, so making sure that we we landscape it, that we light it, that we um, create a, a a building facade and, and a a structure that doesn't encourage um, you know bad behavior for for lack of a better term. So. Um, all good comments and, and all good things that we are conscious of and, and we'll do our best to to make sure they stay at the forefront throughout this this planning process. Patrick, you had a question or comment? Yeah, uh, Wade, you said something about you, if I understood right, you need to switch something in the contract to a different template. As there, this is sort of a multi-part question. Uh, that does not mean that you need any kind of a delay here. And I see on the uh, page that this is being referred to uh, finance and then back to the council next week. Yep. So should we put some kind of wording on our approval of this that we um, somehow accept the revision to the new template that you want to use? In order yeah, to keep so this we, going. Yep. Yeah, yeah, we had a committee earlier today that it was referred to our H and I committee. And I suppose that they um again they they approved the or they recommended approval of the contract, but then I just 
requested that they state um, with the correct contract template as currently being prepared by by city staff. Yeah. Um, so they and I do have that. Actually, I, I worked with our legal today and I have that contract uh, all ready to go. I just have to delete a couple irrelevant sections and then we'll get that, um, you know, to, to council next Tuesday. So, yeah. So that means we're doing it as the Healthy Neighborhoods um, Grant Review Committee did earlier today. Yeah, if you want, okay. yeah, I don't know if you saw that meeting, but yeah, exactly no, right. I, just, yep. I see it on the referral page here. Yep. And then the, the council next week on Tuesday will get the updated correct template and everything um, accurate that they need. Yep, and I don't quite know what exactly I have to do, but I will, I will make sure they get the correct contract, yep. So do we need a small amendment to our, or like a friendly amendment to our um, moving to approve this? Okay, if we don't, fine. Any other questions or comments? I, I, I'll put that in there though, Patrick. Okay, any other questions or comments? I, I can make a comment. Okay, so um, I, I, I know the uh, provider that is the person that is doing this um, um, is going to do this study, and um, this, you know, this company, Equity by Design, is working with the city of Madison in several projects. So there is, so so it's a reputable, uh, you know, a consulting firm. So um, so I will recommend to all of you approve this. This is the first step. Uh, you know, we are doing the feasibility study. You know, so to determine if there is a need. Um, um, what are the needs, and if we are planning the future to build this, how we're going to do it? So, um, so that's it. A note of confidence is what you're saying. Yes, good. Okay. Well, back to the motion. Then, uh, those in favor of this uh, R one eighty twenty one. Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank, thanks, Wade. Am I, am I off the hook, Scott, or you, 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 anything else? You, you may go. <laughs> have a good night. See ya. Thank you. We're lucky to have them, that's for sure. All right, so on to communications, Scott. Yep, and, and I do have some communication items. Uh, first off, I, I did want to i let the Park Commission know that Resolution 14821, which was the contract for the uh, Hub Phase 1, that was approved uh, by the Council, so I wanted to report that. I, I did want to give um, a, a couple updates about the Mayor's proposed uh, operating budget. Uh, we did, uh, the, the Mayor did include in his budget an additional uh, park and street maintenance position, uh, and this was through the town of Madison addition. Uh, he did not include the the additional park maintenance position that that the park commission requested. But I did mention we're thankful that we're we are going to get some additional staff. Uh, the city forester naturalist. Oh, just a question on that. It, I I think the way I understand is we do have one staff position already that is split between public works and parks. Correct. I think it's six months public works, six months in the summer on parks. Correct. So is this an additional position it, it, just like that? Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. And and we do, you know, the, the supervisors, they they work with that a little bit to, you know, to get the maximum use out of those, those positions. Uh, the city forester naturalist, uh, we did request an additional day uh, but that was not included in the in the mayor's budget. Uh, we we did receive five thousand dollars for tree planting. Uh, we did request twenty five, uh, but we we did we were able to get five, so we were thankful for that. And then also, if you recall, oh, go ahead, Patrick. As long as you're mentioning tree planting, I was going to mention this somewhere. Um, McKay Nurseries was planting trees in McGaw Park today. Thank you. And th those were some of the um, warranty trees. So, okay. Uh, we did, if you recall, in the operating budget, we uh, proposed fifteen thousand dollars for the community gardens 
not a work. Uh, part of it was going to be planning for the small scale egg park in Terra Vesa. That was removed. Uh, and then actually Misty and Finance suggested, which was a great suggestion, we have some park improvement dollars uh, for Swan Creek and Quarry Hill. Uh, so we'll be able to use those park improvement dollars to do the improvements that we were looking to do for the community gardens in those two parks. So we took the $15,000 out of operating. Uh, the, the small scale egg planning uh, was taken out of that, but, but also with our new ability to use park improvement dollars for park design, that may be something that we might bring back uh, just because we do have some dollars that we can now use for that, uh, for that park design. Uh, and then again, the, you know, the water line and the storage shed, we're going to be able to utilize our park improvement dollars for, for those improvements. Park shelter rental fee discussion. Uh, just as a, a little bit of a prelude that staff were working on our park shelter rental fee structure, specifically the large event uh, category, we're looking to potentially eliminate that uh, because what happens is for the large events, there's some events that may go for three days or may, maybe events that go for one day. So we're taking a look at that to be more objective that if the shelter is being used for a specific day, then that needs to be paid for that specific day. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of a heads up that we're working, for example, Festa Italia, they, they may use the park two days for setup, two for the event and one or two for the cleanup. So instead of the $900 for all of those, we would charge them in theory for setup on Thursday, setup on Friday, event Saturday, event Sunday, and then clean up on Monday. But the, the, the fees would be adjusted so that everybody, is, it's, you know, it's consistent and fair instead of just that one, that one large fee, uh, uh, fee payment. And then we're also going to, with the pickleball courts, we're going to add uh, our fee, what the rental fee for the pickleball courts will be in 2022. But we're working with administration on that first uh, and then we'll bring a proposal to the Park Commission and then hopefully get that approved by the end of the year. Okay, I have a question about um, when you mentioned um, the pickable uh, fee, you know, the same with the Mackey Farm Park, the tennis court, that they supposed to pay a fee, you Correct. know? Correct. How you, you will ensure that people are going to reserve those mm -hmm. cards? This is something that we need to think about as a park commission. What are the other application or tools that we can use so people, you know, can pay for that? Because you said we can, you know, or we can determine they're open and free, you know what I mean? Or if we are going to charge a fee, we should have the tool or resources to collect those fee. And this is my question is, how we are going to do it. Well, is there is an online option that I can go and register and say, I want to use this pickable. I go, go, put my credit card, boom, boom, and have it. Or maybe this is something that we need to consider to have, you know, to collect the fee. Or it's going to be how? Because I want to know how people, if I had to reserve the Maquis Farm Park, the tennis car, how can I do it? Do I need to come to the city hall? You know, how, I think this is our thing that we need to think as a commission and say how we can make this mm -hmm. flexible, easy, simplify, and use the technology, you know, as a and, part of all of this. So. And, and we, currently, we currently do do that where people can register and reserve online. Uh, and, and basically all of the facilities are first come, first serve, unless you want to make sure that you've got the McKee shelter or the, the Tower Hill shelter that you've got to reserve it, then you have exclusive use, if you would, of it. Uh, when you reserve it, you can pay it online too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's really, that's the rec department. We, that's the most efficient way for the recreation. Instead of people coming in and filling out forms and all of that kind of stuff, they pay online with credit cards is what they do for their reservation. So maybe we need to do a better job to uh, informing the community how is the process. Sure, sure. Um, to pay, 
They currently do. They currently do do that. So, uh, Seminole Glen Park update. I, I know uh, Sue did ask me to provide a, a bit of an update on that. Uh, I will tell you that there's a CIP project uh, included uh, in next year's CIP, and I know Claudia is working on an RFP uh, that'll go out that will actually uh, evaluate both the stormwater facilities and the kettle. Uh, so that's that's in the works. I, I know also we've got, it's called the public, uh, public grounds uh, inventory, which is an inventory of all the stormwater facilities. And then actually uh, it has a management strategy for each of those. So uh, that's another document that, that, that the city is working on regarding that. I have a question about that. Hmm? So the stormwater facilities within parks are those that have been constructed and designed to DNR standards or are they does it also include things like, for example, Wildwood South Prairie Park where the low ground gets the water, but it was not an area designed and engineered as a facility? Well, I think, I think what they're doing is they're inventorying all their stormwater facilities, uh, it, as far as I understand. And yeah. then they're coming up with their management strategies for each of those for facilities. For theirs, yeah. Because so many, it, well, and it, maybe it's a discussion for another time, but the, the rub with getting this one done was that we were told by Public Works that this wasn't uh, designed and engineered, and so that wasn't their responsibility. Well, I, I think. Right, and every old park, older than that one, is probably in the same boat. Where they're from neighborhoods developed before uh, there were DNR standards for stormwater uh, districts. So I'm looking for a broad, more broad list so when there are problems, it's not that every park has a problem, and I'm not even right. suggesting Wildwood South Prairie Park right. has a problem. We just, we're unrecognized. And so when there is a problem, it takes years and it, neighbors tearing their hair out to get an answer. And, and, and in fairness, I think the first, the first step is to inventory everything and then they can have a policy decision or discussion on what is stormwater and what's park and then so at that they, point. Okay, so I'm, maybe I misunderstood. So they, they plan to look at every park. Yep. Uh, All right. Every storm, I, every storm I understand now. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And, and actually, the, the study, which, which, which is really nice, is they're going to even provide a strategies or management strategies specifically for the kettle in Seminole Glen Park. So that's going to be some additional information that we can utilize to manage it. So that, Right. That'll be great. Yep. That's going to be good. Yes, Patrick. And uh, so this, you're going to produce a map then similar to the map that shows right. all the, what? I'm, I'm not gonna produce it, no. Somebody is? Yeah, that's a, it, it, like I say, it's a stormwater facility okay. initiative. Public Works is going to I, produce a map of all of their stormwater facilities. Right. And then that will show us. Um, What's theirs? What, yeah, what are parks and what are stormwater facilities that may be next to a park or seem to be in a park, we're going to have some um, we'll idea have to be able to differentiate, yep. such as in McGaw Park, you know, the, the north end of the western edition, north of the pickleball courts. There's a couple of yep. ponds there. Right. We'll uh, able to I, I have wondered and people have asked me, is that parkland or is that stormwater? Storm. Or, I mean, is that public works stormwater? I, I think this will, this will, like I say, this will, this will clarify yeah, all good. of those, which then will clarify whose jurisdiction does it fall yeah. in for, for maintenance and those kinds of things. Good. So. That should be interesting. Yes. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, the next one is a garbage operation in parks. Uh, we're, we're potentially going to propose to the, the Park Commission a pilot program. Uh, we're really trying to, you know, with our capacity in the, in the parks uh, and garbage, uh, what we're finding is a lot of the garbage cans that we have in our neighborhood parks are just basically for the dog waste bags, if you would. Uh, so the idea of coming up with a, a proposal that, you know what, maybe some of these neighborhood parks won't have garbage cans in them, so then 
in turn we don't have to go and empty them and, and those kinds of things. I think we're just trying to find some efficiencies within our with within the operation and as it relates to uh, garbage in the park. So there might be some some uh, pilot program suggestions to the park commission. Patrick, just on your description that. That right there does not sound like a good idea to eliminate the garbage cans so that people, we want them to clean up after their dog and if they don't have a place to put it. Well, we encourage them to take it, take it home with uh, them. That's still not a good idea. That's not, <laughs> that's not helping out the, the cause. Even well, if your park well, staff have to empty the containers, or I know that in some parks, um, toward Co Tower Hill, I think, um, I think what the staff does, if I've seen this, I've seen this in the past, they roll the garbage cans out to the street and the then staff, the garbage no, truck that staff, comes along dumps them? Staff doesn't do that. Uh, the neighbors roll them out, oh, actually. Oh, okay. Well, good. Yeah, in, in a couple different parks, Swan Creek. Right. And, so we're really lucky that way. I know there's one in McGough the, Park that is, right. the, the, you the don't thing, even have to touch it. The garbage truck, I think, comes in and grabs that one and dumps it just as they come through my neighborhood. So your crew I'm, doesn't have I'm to. I'm just saying control. we're... we're Going to propose some some ideas, and, and the park commission can decide what they what they want to do. That's I just wanted to give you a, a little bit of a heads up that a lot of our neighborhood park garbage cans are just filled with dog waste. I don't see a problem with that, and from my point of view, I would encourage you to help out the public for disposing of the waste. Well, or and, whatever. and again, well, I mean, if they're in the park. And they're collecting things. And again, what we, waste from the park should go into the yeah. park. But but again, uh, through through the the lens of our limited capacity and uh, all the garbage cans that we have to fill, we're 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 trying to provide some some efficiencies and in, in trying to uh, trying to do that. So it's just a, a heads up for you. Go ahead. So um, maybe we can discuss this when they bring this to us. But I want to tell you our our role as a municipality is we serve the people that they live in the in the municipality so we always have to have that in mind so okay and i i think yeah, this might be uh somewhat of a discussion with the current uh waste hauler pelletieri to see if there is well see if they do empty the cans if they're out on the street even though they're right next to a park that kind of thing so that the crew doesn't have to take the cans and and haul them somewhere um, Palatieri will, as they're driving by, empty a trash can, recycling can. Okay. Very good. Uh, Stoner Prairie Park planning update. Uh, I am reaching out to some some firms uh, and, and seeing if I can not gather some proposals to, to help us finish that Stoner Prairie uh, Park planning update. Yeah, I have a question. What is the budget and how we're going to pay for that? Uh, the, the, uh, I'm going to put a not to exceed price of $20,000 on, on the project. And we're going to, uh, I got to confirm with, uh, with finance, but uh, this, with our, our learning that we can do park design, we can use park improvement fees for park design. This is going to be how I'm going to, to pay pay for through the park improvement fees. Do you think that twenty thousand dollar is gonna be enough? Plenty. Yeah? Plenty. Yeah. Okay. Plenty. Plenty. I'm thinking of maybe even fifteen to be honest with you. Cause uh, in, in theory we you know if you take a park planning process, uh, a lot of it is to inventory what we've got. We've got that. To do a survey, we've done that. So really, all I'm, I'm going to ask this company to do is to provide some some design options. I'm going to run all the public meetings and all of those kinds of things. So they're at the end of the day are just going to provide the landscape architect a couple different options and then do some revisions and, and all of those kinds of things. Yes, please. I have a follow-up question. So uh, when are you planning to send the RFP? Well, it, it, it's not going to be an, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I've selected some firms that I'm going to send it to and ask them to prevent okay. to me a, a proposal. And within our, our purchasing policy, if it's under $25,000, I just need to get three mm -hmm. 
-hmm. three different quotes. Um, so, so when is the deadline? What is your time frame? Well, I, I, I'm wrapping it up, so it'll be probably, I'll probably give the firms two to three weeks. Okay. Uh, and then at the end of the day, I'm, I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to just uh, do a, a pre-approval and, and select a group and, and get going with the work. Go ahead, Patrick. Uh, you said not to exceed 20, but you said maybe 15. So maybe, maybe the way you should propose this as uh, not to exceed 15, but with special approval, whatever that might mean, well, uh, 20. And again, it, it's going to, in order to, to even the playing field, I, I, I do like to put a budget on it. And then it's basically what, what firm is going to give us the most services for the dollars that we've got allocated. Okay. Um, regarding the... Uh, when you make the selection, will you send out an email and let us know? Because that may occur before the next meeting. Right. I'll, Is that what I'll, you're thinking it may? I'll be sure to, certainly I'll be sure yeah. to let you know. Okay. Uh, I do want to one more time express the concern that the survey we have is weak based on, I, based on the problems that occurred during the process. And, and, and again, I, I think no surveys, as, as we discussed, no surveys are, are fail-proof, fail uh, but I think the information that we received is, is good information, and I think you know, professionals will be able to evaluate that information and, and come up with some, uh, some different designs. So I'm, 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 pr I'm confident that we're going to be able to have a good plan at the end of the day, that's for sure. Uh, park design update, our park designation. I think this is one of the things that you asked me to keep on the agenda, Patrick, and there's no update on that item. Uh, potential Terra Vesa Egg Park planning update. Uh, that was another one that, uh, as I recall, the RFP was supposed to be coming to the Park Commission this month, but with the, the budget uh, allocation with the mayor not including the planning, then, then that one is a bit on hold, uh, but we'll continue to, to work on that. And I don't know if there's any other project that you were looking for an update on. Yes. Go ahead, Julia. Okay, for the, um, for the Potencia Terra Vesa Act Park, can we use a park improvement plan for the Terra Vesa? That, that, that was my, that's my because hope, so I'm going to talk, other park, why we I'm gonna, use it for great, I'm going to talk to finance if, yeah. if we can't use yeah, because dollars for park design, right? Exactly. If we use it for one park, we have to be consistent. I, we I would, for well, I, I would, I would agree. Um, yeah. But at the end of the day, I can only, I can only promote and request. <laughs> we need to be consistent with the, you know, how we use our funds. So. I would agree. Yep. What was there any other, uh, any other project that you were looking for an update on, Patrick? It was more of an idea of you tell us what things are in the work to keep us aware. If we, you know, obviously if we have something in particular we want to ask about, we can do that. But you, you know, may I, know of things going on that we may not have heard of at, until we hear this update. Yeah, the inclusive playground, I, I know we, we're working on the common earthwork for that. And we're doing tree, uh, Anna's doing um, uh, warranty work, uh, which you reported. Um, they, I th think I saw they were planting new trees rather oh, than yeah. replacing. Oh, yeah. they're, they're, Is they're it both? Both, yeah. Oh, okay. Warranty and, and, uh, and new trees. Okay. Yeah. But that's, that's all I have. And you're going to, we have staff reports and updates. Anything that you want to add there, Scott? No, I think we're, I it's think we're good. included in our packet. Any future agenda items? Just one, um, suggestion. And I'm thinking of the pickleball courts there, just to sort of gauge demand if there was something or other that you could, you know, hang a clipboard or something on there in some way of just asking people to put a check mark or something to have an idea of, you know, not in great detail, but how many uses of courts are going on so that we can see. I mean, the most that I've seen in regular use, I think, was five courts in use at one time. When I go by, obviously there was um, more going on at the ribbon cutting. Uh, yeah, it, it, you it, could it, do this at the McKee Tennis Complex as well. 
Did you see how busy they are? Yeah, I, I you know, certainly. I, I think, it, you know, all of those facilities, we could have sheets out there and ask people to, to fill them out, those kinds of things. I, I will tell you that uh, Chad and, and uh, the pickleball group we met today uh, about the idea of beginning to start to put together some programming for uh, not only programming for 2022, but also amenity amenity improvements that the pickleball group would be interested in seeing out there, but more importantly, participating in the in the improvement. So we're meeting with with that with that organization. This this might be somewhat related to what Julia was asking about about the reservations of court. And yes, uh, reservation gives you the right to a tennis court or a, or a pickleball court or such just like shelters, um, but if there was some simple way to kind of gauge how yeah, busy these are, we'd, we'd know, you know it's, it's the demand. Unless, unless we have someone sitting there watching it. To no, no, drill. not, not, and well, exactly, not I, anything where they have to fill out a page every time they want to play I, a game of pickleball, just a, like a check mark on a page for on a calendar or something like that. Yeah, I just... <laughs> That's just logistically, a, a, so then we got to go out there and check it and, and all those kinds of things. It's, I, I, I'm I, thinking I, simple. We'll, we'll, we'll think about that, see okay. if we can't come up with a, okay. of a way to do that. This, this is Heidi, and I, I just want to throw an opinion. So with things like the tennis courts and the basketball courts and those sort of things, I mean, some of those things, I guess, I tend to believe are, are sort of, you know, as taxpayers, that's what we pay for to be able to use things that go above and beyond in parks like, you know, shelters and, and uh, you know, electricity or, or whatever else. I mean, those are the things that, that you would have to pay for um, if, if you wanted to specifically reserve a time or if you're a business that wants to give tennis lessons or something like that, I guess that would be a, a different scenario. But I guess my thought is keeping them open to the public as much as possible. It, it just, I guess that's just my thought. It, it, and you're exactly right, Heidi. Uh, generally, they are all open to the public. But if someone wants to have a tennis match or a pickleball or run, rent a shelter, you know, they don't want to risk risk someone else being there, then they then they pay the, the rental fee to, to ensure that they have the facility. And Patrick, your comment, though, was more about trying to gauge use of something new. Exactly. Like the pickleball courts. So in the future, when um, someone asks, do we need to build more? Well, how do we know how much they're being utilized now? Exactly. That's what you're looking for. Right, exactly, yes. I, I mean, we've got eight pickleball courts, so unless a club or a large uh, group wants to come and, you know, have all eight of them for a tournament on the weekend, they're first come, first serve, open to everyone, and then that group then to have, let's say, all eight or six out of eight or something uh, exclusively available to them on a day, uh, then they would need to reserve it. But beyond that, just... How busy are they? How they busy are they today, or any other day? Uh, probably not with the rain, no. But everybody took a day off today. Anything else on? Uh, go ahead. Somebody else is working on your parks report. Microphone. Oh, in your parks report. Mm -hmm. So uh, it mentioned at the end that fencing at the. Hugel and Tower Hill, what are you fencing? Um, is it the parks report? It's in your parks report. Is that, is that Joran's report? Uh, from Joran? Yeah, it's, um, I don't know who is it. It's, um, it's parks report October 2021. Is that from Joran? Oh, Jordan, yeah. Yeah, okay. Joran. What, what, what one are you talking about? The last line. The last one, they said fencing. Fencing at Hugo James, yeah, we yeah. have within our, our CIP uh, outfield fence at Hugo Jamestown. Okay. And we also have a fence, a backstop fence repair in our CIP for Tower Hill, so he's working on that. The fencing is for, for the baseball 
cord? Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. The outfield fence at Hugo Jameson, and then okay. repair of the backstop yeah, yeah, over yeah. here. Okay. And those are all in the in the CIP. Is, no, I know, but I want. Is there anything on that where they are push pounding posts into the ground? I don't know what kind of repair this is. Well, they would. Uh, I would suspect they do it for the outfield fence at Hugo Jamestown. What are they, What are they doing with the fence? They're putting. They're installing a new new oh, outfield new fence. fence. Yeah, a new outfield fence. Okay. For the ball diamond at Hugo Jamestown. And the parks crew is doing this. No, no. We'll we'll hire that out. Um. Okay, then I'm going to remind you of my suggestion from a couple of years ago about looking into buying your own post pounder so that the staff can do this, and that could be used at the McKee Tennis Courts, too. Any other uh, questions or comments on staff reports and updates? Uh, moving on then to future agenda items. I, 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 did, I did notice that we've got referred uh, for November the Fahey Fields uh, development. So that'll be coming before the Park Commission. I just noticed that. Julia? So the other thing I want to mention is that um, the mayor's uh, proposed 2022 budget is out there, and we elders have until October 14 to put amendments. So if you want me to bring something that it was removed from the parks budget, I am going to be working on the amendment this weekend. Send me an email, so because I am the one who can bring those one back, you know. So let me know, um, so um, I can or call me and we can discuss. The other thing that I was, I was very, I want to make a comment that I was very disappointed to see that uh, it wasn't included the another day for Anna Healy. Um, position. I know that our, she, hasn't, she has been working with the same schedule for the last, I don't know, five, six years maybe. Uh, and then, as you know, our parks, uh, we have more parks, we have more trees. Um, and I have experienced this working with her in a couple of neighborhoods in my district that sometimes neighbor wants things to be done right away. Um, she doesn't have the time to do it, and I think because she's too busy, she's doing too much, you can see her report, so, uh, and I think that one is was something that we need to, as a park commission, we should be requesting that, you know, I wanna bring forward an amendment to, to put it back, uh, yeah. put that one day, because I think this is a critical position, and she's not only the forester, she's also a naturalist too for the city, so uh, I think this is a key, and it's only one day that we are asking. So, yeah. and, and you know, from the from the park commission commission's perspective, certainly that's appreciated, Julie, because that is a proposal that the park commission submitted to the mayor. So, they they realize and see that need. So, if you being an advocate for that park commission request, that'd be that's great. That's great. Next Tuesday, the twelfth is the discussion or the, the work between for you to present the amendments, but then the, the hearing on them is November 9th for the public? Uh, for the budget, everyone can come. Mm. Um, you have three minutes to say, you know, do you agree with some of the things that were put in the budget or, or you know, disagree with some of the stuff, you know, as a resident, you know, it's a public. We have until October 14th to bring to bring our amendment to MISTI. And then on October 27, it's gonna be our committee of the whole meeting. And then the council will discuss those amendments. Um, we are gonna have a big discussion. And then when we go to vote in November, I don't remember which day, because when you vote on the, on the budget, it's a more, the protocol is more strict. Um, so this is why, we had the committee of the whole meeting to go in deep with those, our all amendments. So when we go to the next meeting in November to vote, you know, we already go and vote, you know what I mean? And that's it. Uh-huh. So. Um, so I know last year, uh, David Garter and I testified or spoke in favor of the inclusion of the summer intern program. And I think that would have been that last meeting you're talking about 
Mm -hmm. And I, you know, that's everyone's individual prerogative. If you down the road feel strongly about anything, one way or another, uh, you can send emails or speak in favor of or against mm -hmm. any item. Julia, did you say the Committee of the Whole discussing the amendments was the 27th of? October. October, okay. And then that looks like the, the public hearing at the Common Council is November 9th. All right, uh, our next two meetings, November 4th, December 2nd. It's a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. A second. A second. Oh. It's, no, it's 728. In favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Oh. Aye. Aye.